profitability is missing. Well, we got a lot of sun this week. I opened up the shade net. Uh, that was a great comment. And that's why it's so important for you guys to give me a like, a subscribe, comment down below, ask me any questions. And together, we can grow this channel. We were going to plant lettuce this week, but it has been super hot. We're prepping the field. I'll walk through the field. and we've been doing a lot of cleanup. I think we ended up turning greenhouse too. This is lettuce inside here. Yes, you can plant your lettuce closer together. I bet you could probably do eight rows versus uh, the five rows we have here. But iceberg, I think this is iceberg over here. That's out of mine, that's a red, and then a salanova. So we have iceberg, a salanova, two types, red and green. Uh, right now I'm inside the nursery and I can see that they're already starting to protest. You can see that they're already kind of wimping out and, and they don't like that, but it's, a des uh, it's, it's like a desperate need before you put any plant into the field is that you do something what is called uh, hardening off. That's give it less water, more sunlight, and then you make it stronger. So these guys actually bounce back. It actually looks like a salad, but at the edges here, you can see down the center that they did not like it. Now, out of mine, looks like it's just a very particular crop variety. I looked back on the pictures, its germination rate was uh, 100%. And then once it started getting sun and or just climate type change, that it was like, ah, I don't like this. I'm not as happy as I used to be. Here, I think is a really nice um, lettuce variety. It looks really good. And I think that's ready to f uh, feel. These are look like they need a little bit more. Um, based on the comments, which is why I really say, ask me any questions, comment, because one of the comments that got brought up was, what do you do to feed your lettuce seedlings? What do you do to um, fix your crops? What do you do in the nursery? And then, hey, Joe, you should actually go and do these things. I, I grow lettuce, this is what you should do. So I'll share this video this week. I can't thank you enough for giving me uh, feedback because together we can grow. This one, I don't know what's up with this variety compared to the other ones, right? Like the other ones did good. Yes, they're going to they're gonna have some ones that just don't do well once you start exposing them to the sun. And we're not even really exposing them to the sun. We kind of just opened up the center. So this one, I would expect to have a lot more losses than the other ones just due to the heat. But it shouldn't be as bad. And you can see over here that it was a little bit different but you can definitely see them protesting they definitely got a little bit the soil's a little wet but that's kind of deceiving cocoa peat is a uh, very uh deceiving and uh whether it's wet down at the bottom so there's something to worry about there but we this is a necessary uh evil that you have to expose your plants to more uh sunlight then um, as you get ready to put them into the field. So now you can see the different varieties. I, I was wrong. We're not doing romaine this time. We're doing iceberg and two different salanovas. So um, we'll have a um, romaine in the next cycle. So it'll be romaine and iceberg. Overall, these guys look good. I'm not too worried about it. Yes, I'm kind of sad and bummed out that these guys got burned into here just due to the heat but this would happen in the field but the ones that did get extra sun they seem to be a lot more uh tolerant but again comment down below and let me know what you think about my uh lettuce but right now it just looks like a yummy snack like i feel like you could just harvest like mini greens on this and it'd be well worth it so they, they looked pretty good uh, other than that some are definitely protesting and dying, but we're going to get them some water here later in the afternoon. Again, right now, it's really tough to determine watering because you have a little bit of sun, you have a lot of sun, then you have a little bit of sun, and then a lot of sun. It's just really tough right here in our climate. We're going through a weird weather pattern where we're starting to get a lot of heat, which is great because then we don't have to worry about the disease issues in the field because your lettuce is going to be pretty dry, but you're going to need to make sure you water it uh, ridiculous amounts. Otherwise it, it will die out. Uh, we don't want to see that, but I do want to see the weaker ones start falling off here in the nursery. Then before I put them in the field and then watch them die because it just wastes a bunch of labor. Um, let me know if I did it right. We're going to go check out greenhouse one. Oh yeah. And yes, I did in the right order. I went nursery, then greenhouse one, then greenhouse two, 
then mini greenhouse so that everything has been done in the correct order this week. All right, let's go. I've I lost the day track on this. I have it in a calendar. I'll update uh, later. But right now, just kind of taking a look at these guys. I thought we were going to have harvest uh, today, but it doesn't doesn't seem like we were that lucky. So if not today, then most likely uh, next week we'll have it. So these guys are starting to fill out pretty nice. So it's pretty good. They're starting to set at the right right spots to, ooh, I see. No, that's not a white fly. White fly look crazy when you, when you touch them. So this, we've been pretty draconic on ours because you can see that the mites, they come in. This is one of their favorite sides. So let's walk down this side. When you're scouting a field, whether it's inside a greenhouse or that, you want to keep like a, a really regimented pattern and you want to really find out what it is because it also could be other factors like it could be from the net. I also notice I have some dripping. So there's a lot of reasons why this side could be more affected with mites than the other parts of the greenhouse. Uh, the other thing I uh, pointed out in the comments, which is why I like, is I wanted to check my stocks. And, you know, not my stocks, like, you know, the, the stock market, but my plant stocks. So my plant stocks here, um, because they mentioned that it could be a corn uh, borer. There is a borer that goes inside your plant and it'll bore everything out. It'll sit inside the stock and it actually makes its little home. And that's why when you spray... When you spend all this money on your spray and your labor, it doesn't kill the bugs. The bugs just keep coming back and coming back, right? It makes a lot of sense to me. Could be that there is a borer inside some of these. I haven't noticed any issue. The reason I don't suspect borer in some parts is because I haven't had any borers inside my actual fruited plants. You would see it. They, they will have like the... The very hungry caterpillar, it will eat the crap out of your peppers. Your peppers will get utterly devastated if it has a uh, boar. They will just chomp, you'll come back, and like half your crop will be bitten out of it. It'll just be amazing. It'll only take like two bites, and then you got to throw away the whole thing. Um, so make sure we, we do that. So I wanted to check my uh, tops today, but this is still mite. Mite is very easy to see. It's very browning right in there and then it does this crinkling. That's the sign of mite. Mite does that. It's also terrible for what I did as I touched it. And if I don't spray my hand and I touch this plant and then I touch this plant and then I touch that plant, it kind of carries on. These guys did pretty good. These guys bounced back. Nice, but you can start seeing that the fruit's filling. It could be next week. It really depends how much I, I feed them right now. I don't see any, a lot of uh, pollination issues. It looks like that my crop's getting uh, taller. Best way, you should probably just measure your crop and see how far it grows per week. That's probably what I should institute myself. Um, since this variety we know is a known compact variety, um, you could do simple measures like, all right, it grew uh, three inches this week. Okay, got it. And then what's my actual height? Like I said, we only have a finite height of what we can grow to, and then we can actually manage the crop. So those are things that we look at too. But the fruit set is also the balance too. So balancing height, growth, vigor, and fruit set are a balancing act because if I give it too much calcium nitrate, it's gonna start dropping fruit. And then if I give it uh, more uh, potassium and phosphate, it won't have as much greening and vigor. At least that, that, that's the understanding of how you feel. There's always nuances of how you can change that. But right now, that's kind of what we're basing everything on. Uh, the filling seems pretty good. I'll show you my fertilizer blend that I'm implementing. It's a really simple uh, 3 two, one formula. And I know a lot of people ask it in other comments. So I really try to make sure I repeat myself um, as often as I can when I talk about um, fertilizer, growing, protection. A lot of that stuff is just so important. But I will say that even though this house, and this is what's so funny about nursery, why we saw the burning earlier, is that this house has done really well in terms of protecting itself. Other than this, this little guy, this happens. You know, that's just not enough uh, calcium. You can start seeing it in here. When it starts having other ones, it just comes right off easily. Don't feel bad about it. It is what it is. Um, you have this one, which is clearly might inside there it's just lodged as well so yeah yeah we don't really have a first harvest on this we may not have a first harvest on the other one and that that's because i forgot my day count if you forget your day count then you won't know 
what you expect. With this variety, we expect day 53 from transplant to actually have first harvest. And first harvest is based on the firmness of your fruit. So when you grab your fruit down in here, so you can see when you grab it and you feel, see it's a little soft spot. It's not ready because that's what gets your weight when you take it to market. When you take this little uh, pepper to market, that is what um, you're looking for because that's actually provides the weight. Now I'm seeing over here more mite infestation on this side of the greenhouse than I did last week, which I don't like because I'm seeing this is spray concentration more than likely. That's a toxicity and that's a spray issue. This one's looking really nice, but still very, still got a while. Still got a while. I'm noticing also here, see it's like a soft spot. Let's zoom in on that. So you got a soft spot. You worry about that because that, that could cause your uh, blossom in or out. Normally it'll actually start at the blossom end, but it could happen. But here, there's something up. I don't know why they're stunting themselves out. They're producing a lot of flowers, which isn't uh, normally good because that's kind of like a panic result, but they're not growing higher. It looks like we probably did some sort of cutting to actually push them out, but you can see all into here, this is very good sign that there's mite and or thrip damage. This one's actually pretty, pretty vigorous. Like when you feel the plant and you kind of look at it, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Again, a lot of the agricultural stuff is just you got to look and feel. There is a lot of science behind other things to get everything perfect and consistent. But some things you just you just can't just keep dumping spray and that without actually looking at the plant overall and seeing like, all right, why does this plant do X? So that's why I really record every week. Is it ever really a day off farming? So other than that, it's been not bad. I'm not really too worried about it. I'm more worried about that I keep seeing the massive amount of mites. And every time there's a massive amount of mites, you just have to treat, treat, and then hopefully they bounce back. And then with like the growing program and the feeding program, hopefully it'll power through it and then go on. But I don't really see too much as I scout the outside of the field. Everything looks good. Our bass are looking good. I didn't bring my tools because I packed my car uh, full uh, right now for a trip. But everything looks good. I don't see anything that I didn't see last week. It's, it's put on a lot of vigor. I mean, as you can see here, it's, it's a very, very, very beautiful um, image, but I, I really, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss with this. So if anybody wants to comment down below and explain to me like what I'm doing wrong with why I'm having such mite issues on my plants, I, I'd really like to know. This is actually a really good picture right here. I think I'll stop and take a picture of this. That's what I said. You just have to watch my channel. Give me a like, subscribe, a share, comment down below, ask me any questions, follow me, then you can definitely grow anything.